Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about whether or not silence makes a fearful avoidant attachment style miss their partner. And this can be either while in a relationship, while on the rocks, while on a break, um, or even post relationship in general. So after a relationship has ended and people have sort of gone their separate ways. So the answer to this is a little more tricky than you might think. And the answer is that yes, initially silence can make a fearful avoidant really miss their partner. And there's sort of this interesting dynamic that tends to happen with fearful avoidance, where initially there's a longing or a missing of their partner. And initially will depend on the context of the relationship. So if you are, you know, you've broken up, Originally, fearful avoidance will kind of repress their emotions around a situation. And then across time, they'll start to feel like, okay, you know, I can feel my emotions a little bit more. They'll lower their defense mechanisms at a subconscious level. And that's where that sort of that set, that onset of missing the partner will sort of surface. And this is where you'll see the fearful avoidance be like, oh, I do miss my partner or my ex or whoever it is. And in that period of time, they'll often experience that longing. Now, the really interesting thing that often happens next is if they don't see longing reciprocated or if they don't feel or believe that the other person is missing them as well, what actually happens is fearful avoidance who gets sparked into that anxious side during that onset of missing somebody feel rejected. And often the fearful avoidance response to rejection is to shut down and to go into self-protection mode. And this is actually what tends to trigger or activate their avoidance side. And you'll see fearful avoidance. It's like they go from when they miss somebody or when they're silence or space um, in a relationship dynamic, what they'll do is they'll initially sort of repress their feelings around it for a little while. Then eventually they'll start being like, wow, I really do miss this person. That onset will kick in. They'll swing into their anxious side. And then like a pendulum swinging, go into their avoidance side thereafter. And that's specifically and only if they see or feel that that, um, longing or missing of their partner isn't met with, you know, some kind of evidence that, that person is longing for or missing them back. And this is where they'll go into their avoidance side. And this is where they can sometimes shut down. Um, sometimes, you know, push somebody away actively, um, sometimes test somebody to sort of see what their stance is. And essentially what's happening at a deeper level is if you're a fearful avoidant misses somebody cares about them. Um, and, and then feels afraid of their own feelings around the situation and feels sort of vulnerable and unsafe in a situation if they don't feel like that other person is feeling the same way about them. And fearful avoidance, you know, tend to assume that relationships are a power struggle because often that's what fearful avoidance are exposed to. And when we make it beyond the power struggle stage of relationships, we'll come to find that, hey, guess what? Relationships are not actually supposed to be a power struggle all the time. There's something so much more to relationships than being in power struggle mode. But when fearful avoidance don't have context for that, they often in that anxious side feel like, oh my gosh, I'm giving all my power away. And it's not like they're trying to turn around and have power over the other person. They're just trying to not feel powerless in the relationship to themselves. And vulnerability um, can often make them feel that way before they've really been able to go inside and do that deeper work. Hi, I just wanted to jump in here really quickly and let you know that we are doing one of our most exciting promotions that we do during the entire year. And it is our lifetime promotional sale. So basically the lifetime membership to the personal development school gives you access to all of the 55 plus courses we've ever recorded. And I record a new course and create new content every single month, and it will give you access to all future courses. It also gives you access to all of the daily community events. We have group shares, social events, guided meditations, guided morning and evening routines, communication scripts, practice um, for communicating through challenging situations, and the four live webinars that I do with our students every single week. So at any point when you have a question, um, you're able to jump in there, ask me a question, and we have a history of webinars on a whole bunch of different topics. So it's basically endless content. And the really nice thing about the lifetime promotion is not only do you get to continuously learn for life, 
So that gives you the safety and comfort of knowing that you can rely on anything that you need in terms of going through a challenging situation, be it a breakup, be it a really rocky time in your romantic relationship with somebody. If you're looking to work on boundaries, some sort of change in the workplace, we've got courses for that as well. Um, so there's all these resources at your fingertips for life. And that promotion is going on right now. You can click the link below for almost 50% off. And I would love to see you on the other side. Come join me in the webinars, come ask me questions. And thank you for watching this. So this is some of what's going on inside of the fearful avoidance mind. If you are a fearful avoidant listening to this, um, it's really empowering to be able to practice communicating your needs when you're missing somebody, when you're feeling like there's time or space apart from somebody and share, hey, I'm feeling disconnected. I would really love to be able to spend more quality time or, hey, I feel like we're miles and miles apart and I would love to set some time together to have like a really fun date or to really have like quality time in our relationship. And a lot of what happens in the fearful avoidant mind is they begin become afraid to do that. They're like, well, why shouldn't the other person do that? And what I found a lot of the time in my client practice is that I would see fearful avoidance get into situations where they were, um, you know, connecting to somebody in a relationship and they would think that they were being vulnerable. But then when we would reflect back on like what they did to really show up and express their feelings to a partner, they would come to see that like, I'm not really doing much of the expressing my feelings to a partner, like me showing up and wanting to spend time with them felt like, oh, that's me doing my part. But fearful avoidance sometimes get afraid to give words of affirmation, get afraid to give, um, you know, real um, validation to a partner because they feel afraid of that, that that could make them weak or powerless or that the person thinks, oh, well, you like me so much so I can, you know, take the relationship for granted. And there's a lot of these fears that often dictate and determine fearful avoidance behavior at a subconscious level. Um, and so it's really worth paying attention to because it can really help to transform relationships and actually move beyond any type of power struggle stage and into the stability and commitment and bliss stages of a relationship when vulnerability is there. And if you're the partner of a fearful woman watching this and wondering, oh my gosh, will this person miss me? Um, then it's always really valuable to also express to your fearful avoidant partner, you know, truthfully what it is that you need from them. Um, and that can also look like, hey, you know, I would love for us to be able to communicate more openly and be more vulnerable with one another. Um, I would love for us to, you know, do the courageous thing by expressing our feelings more often, even if, even if it feels scary sometimes. And the more vulnerability comes into a relationship as a whole, specifically in the form of communication, generally the relationship has a much greater capacity to thrive long-term. So I hope this makes sense. Um, thank you so much for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't to this channel. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.